I'm gonna teach you how to break 90 in less than 10 minutes. First thing, take a scorecard, add one stroke to the par of every single hole. You're gonna make par threes into par fours, par fours into par fives, par five into par six. That's gonna change your green and regulation number from the previous professional number to your new number of green and regulation. So on par fives, which are now par sixes, you have to hit them in four shots. Par fours, which are now par fives, you hit them in three shots. And par threes, which are now par fours, you hit them in two shots. That's gonna give you a scorecard of 90 because we're trying to break 90. This is gonna relieve a lot of pressure on your game because you're not trying to score professional level scores, you're trying to play bogey golf. Next step, you have to know the distances that you hit your clubs and the shot shape you hit them with. I'm talking about the honest distance. I don't want you going for your perfect strike that you had in the summer of 07, hitting a seven iron 150 yards. No, we want the number that comes up most often. If you don't know that number or you're lying to yourself, get yourself a GPS watch. It's gonna tell you your numbers within a couple rounds. Use those numbers. Once we have those numbers, we also get to pick which clubs are our best, which distances with which club is our best. And by best, I mean the ones we have the highest confidentiality and the highest trust in. When you trust a club, you look down on it, you're feeling good things, you're gonna have a higher likelihood of making the shot. Regardless of what the data people say, <laughs> these woo, it doesn't mean anything. You know that you like certain clubs over others. We wanna set up the ball to that distance into the greens as often as possible. We're gonna call this our free throw distance. You must know your free throw distances and set those up as much as you can. Now, despite our best efforts to set the ball up to our free throw distance, we are also going to miss greens, which means we want to build another couple of shots for our free throw distance, and that's a pitch shot. Pitch shots, partial pitch shots are very difficult, but what I suggest you do, go to the pitching area, take your 56 degree and your pitching wedge and create a half swing. It doesn't have to be exactly half, you don't have to measure it, it has to be repeatable in your head and it has to feel like 50%, just feel like 50%. Then you go hit the pitching wedge with that 50% shot, maybe 10 or 20 balls, and you go measure the distance of that shot coming up the most often. You'll get a little range, potentially 50 to 60 yards, 40 to 55 yards. Then you take the 56 degree and you hit the exact same swing and then check after 10 or 20 shots how far that ball went. It might be 35 to 45 yards. But now you have two wedge distances you can use to pitch the ball onto the green. Why? Because sometimes you're gonna be in range of the green with your comfortable clubs and you're gonna miss the green left and right or short. You'll also be just outside of the top range of your comfortable shot that will allow you to hit it comfortably into this little range where you can hit your two new shots that you've created. So we know our distance, we got a free throw distance, we added a pitch shot to our game, we've changed the scorecard, so what? So you get to the tee, you get a ball in play with whatever club works. It doesn't have to be the driver, it can be whatever in that moment is gonna work for you. It has to be in the moment that you have high trust and high confidentiality, it's gonna be in play. Why just in play? Why don't I talk about hitting as far as you can as possible and then getting as close to the green and being Bryson DeChambeau? Because you've changed a par four to a par five. That means you have three shots to hit the green. So a 400 yard par four can be three shots of 133 yards. Do you have a 133 yard club? If you don't, my friend, you probably have to go back to break 100 and go see a pro. But anybody can hit a nine iron, eight iron, seven iron, boom, 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 and be around the green in three shots. Now you don't necessarily have to do that, you can if you want, but you might have a longer club from the tee that's very reliable. Let's say it goes 170, 180 yards of the tee. And this is where the magic happens. From that tee shot, you have to see the distance to the green. And from there, you make a decision whether you go for the green or put it in a position at your free throw distance. Those are your two options. And the only way you go for the green is if you are within the top range of your comfortable distances. So if off the fairway, your most comfortable longest shot is 175 yards, you go for the green when your shot from 175 yards either reaches the front edge or puts you in a position to have, hit a free throw distance shot. If you're going from 190 yards and you're trying to whack an extra 10 or 15 yards out of the shot, you're wasting your time, get out of here. I don't want you watching this video. You gotta go watch a hunt, break 100 and get rid of all your clubs. From 200 yards, if you hit a 175 yard club perfectly, you're gonna have 25 yards into the hole. Do you like a 25 yard shot? 
Maybe you don't. Maybe you like a 35 yard shot. You can gear down to 165, put it in a position, pitch it on the green. You're going to find playing for bogey golf, which sounds weak and not cool and not like a pro or against the data, you're going to find that playing for bogey is going to give you sneaky pars, especially when you get it to very comfortable distances that you've been practicing. A 35 yard pitch instead of a 25 yard pitch. A 45 yard pitch instead of a 60 yard pitch. You get to plan the hole the way you want to do it. So when you're near the top range of your bag and you're starting to feel discomfort and you, you might have to whack the ball a bit further, think carefully. What club do I feel confidential and trustworthy hitting from here to set up another confidential and trustworthy shot from there? So you're plotting away, trying to play stress-free, easy shots everywhere you go. If you're outside of your top range, this is where you have to decide which free throw distance you're going to use to get into the green. So let's say you're at 220 yards, you don't have a club that goes 220. You've got a club that goes 160. So you, you can hit that. And if it goes 160, you've got a 60 yard pitch. Do you like a 60 yard pitch? Do you have it in your arsenal? If you don't have it in your arsenal, don't hit it there. Do you prefer 80 yards? Do you prefer 100 yards? Get the ball to that freaking distance and get the ball on the green. Of course, you're not always going to hit the green, and that's why you need a good short game. That's why you need to practice chipping. If you suck at chipping, let me tell you something. Toe down chipping is the easiest way to chip the golf ball. Check out my video on toe down chipping and the rule of 12 in the description. It's going to help you to get up and down much more often. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to hit in the woods. You're going to hit in the water. What happens when you get in the shit? When you get in the shit, you're going to have to learn a punch shot. A punch shot is a long chip shot with low loft. So you hit a standard chip shot with a six iron or five iron from the trees. How do we do that? We don't hit it through the little gap that Tiger Woods or Phil Mickelson would go through because that's a stupid shot. We don't want to be stupid. Those shots are reserved for pros and assholes. Don't be an asshole because you're not a pro. Look where the biggest gap is, the highest percentage chance of you playing well. Okay, sideways. Get it to a playable position. You're going to take double bogeys like this every now and then, but it's better than a triple or having to pick your ball up. And every now and then, when you get the ball into a position that you can play from, you're going to get into a position that's one of your free throw distances, and you're going to make a sneaky par or a sneaky bogey to prove to yourself that you are the man. When you go in the water, take your drop ski and then continue with the process. You're just adding one shot to the score because of the drop. That's all. Don't go chasing your losses from 200 yards taking a drop, trying to whack your 170 yard club 200. Get the ball to your free throw distance, get it on, and you're going to make a few sneaky bogey saves, often just taking the double bogey. When we calculated our new green and regulation, we assumed two putts. And a lot of people get triggered by that because they're like, well, how can you assume two putts? Meow, meow, meow. Listen, any dickhead can two putt, okay? A kid, six years old, can two putt. A 90-year-old grandpa can two-putt from 45 feet. You can. Your brain's just getting in the way. So the first step is to listen to Bob Rutella putting out of your mind 10 times. It's only an hour long. 10 times. Only practice putts you can make. That's a one-foot putt for you. Nothing beyond one foot. Do a hundred of those in a row. Listen to the ball going in the hole. Feel the confidentiality. Bam. Okay, how about longer putts? Stick a tee in the ground and putt from 10 feet and further away to learn distance control. Your small miss to that little tee is going to be a small miss on the golf course, giving you shorter tap-ins. On your scorecard, please do not write down plus one, plus two, or circles, or triangles, or dots. Write the number that goes there, number five, number six, number seven, however many shots you took. And do not count your score relative to par as you play golf. Do not keep score at halfway. You count the score of all the holes at the end of 18, and that's when you realize you haven't just broken 90, you've smashed it with an 84. If you change the par of every single hole, if you learn your new green and regulation number and you learn your free throw distances, if you create those two pitch shots I told you about with your pitching wedge and sand wedge, if you can then get the ball to your free throw distances from one position to another and then chip using toe down chipping and the rule of 12 and then use my putting drills of one foot putts and putting to a tee, you're going to break 90 so easily it's going to make you wonder what the hell took you so long. And I know what took you so long, it was your mental game. Get out of your own head. Do what I say. Stop listening to other Muppets on the internet. Listen to this Muppet because I've been doing this for 25 years on the golf course.